Hi everyone, uh, Darius Gaiden is possibly my favorite shmup of all time. I encountered it years ago at uh, Hay in Tokyo and I fell in love. Uh, and this game's pretty legendary, but it also has a reputation for being incredibly challenging. I see a lot of people online saying, you know, wow, it's, this game's really cool, but it's pretty hard, it's too hard to beat. Um, and, and I mean, after all, this is a game that's firmly in the old school pre Maku era of shooting games. It's a seven stage Hori. It's got some pretty tough bosses uh, and it's got an upgrade downgrade system. But I was able to complete a one credit clear of this game and I do not consider myself anything close to an expert shooting game player. Um, and I was able to achieve this one credit clear in under 30 hours of play uh, while still having a full-time job, a limited gaming time, uh, and playing on the Switch, which is the laggiest of the three modern gaming consoles. So I wanted to make a video sharing a little bit of how I achieved that and uh, show my one credit clear and explain what I'm doing. Now, this recording is actually uh, a video of the first time I one credit cleared the game, which I did by accident, I didn't mean to one credit clear it. I was on my balcony with my girlfriend. She was reading a book, and I was like, "Oh, I'll, I'll play a little Darius Gaiden," uh, and I just happened to, you know, complete my first one credit clear that time. So I, I've done better and cleaner one CCs since this video, but I wanted to post this one because it's really not an optimal run. Like I, I make a bunch of mistakes. I, I wasn't. You know, taking it super seriously, I just happened to clear the game. And I think that's way more useful to people who are trying to get better at the game to see this, to see me make those mistakes, and to have me explain what's happening and why I'm kind of making these decisions. It was pretty tough to find decent and consistent information on this game, but there were some resources uh, like Boffner on YouTube who uploaded a speedrun that he did on Cosmic Collection, as well as um, you know some posts on the Shmups forum, uh, a YouTube video from Matthew DX. Uh, there's a guide that's only in Japanese, sadly, and a really cool super play, official super play, um, and, and those are useful. I'm I'm going to include them in the description. So without further ado, let's uh, let's watch this one credit clear of Darius Guide. Okay. So the first thing that's important to note when playing Darius Gaiden is that you've not only got your micro routing, you've also got your macro routing. So uh, for those who aren't aware, routing is just, you know, through practice and through understanding, determining the path that your ship is going to take through your run. You know, what is the optimal path for that? And uh, in Darius Gaiden, you've got uh, 26 stages, I believe, uh, instead of, you know, a lot of shmups just have five or six. Uh, you only have to play through seven of them, but it can be a little intimidating to, you know, as with any Darius game, is, is to choose, okay, which route do I want to take at a high level? So what I recommend if you're new to the game is to do your macro routing, which is picking the actual stages A, B, C, D. Um, at the same time that you're doing your micro routing through the stages. So, you know, master stage one, get through that, and then, um, uh, you know, move to the next stage. Okay, do you want to do B or C? Try them both, see which one you like, make your choice, and then from there, okay, do I want to do, uh, I pick C, do I want to do E or F? Uh, make your choice, etc. Uh, Gaiden is unique from the other Darius games and that, you know, usually taking the lower route just means it's harder and the higher route means it's easier. That's sort of the case here, but but not really. Uh, th and that's what I did for, for my playthrough. Um, so yeah, I mean, commenting on the run itself, I, I've already made quite a few mistakes. I've taken two hits, so you can see that my shield is actually only at one. And um, that's a pretty important... Uh, uh, element of the game is how the shield works. So every time you pick up a shield item, you can then take an additional three hits before it drains. Uh, but what's important to note is that you see how I've got one, one, uh, I guess, hit left on this shield. Is 
If I then collect another shield item, it'll only go up and give me one additional hit. If I take a hit, so I have no shield, and then pick up the shield item, I'll get three hits. So, you know, that is kind of a way to optimize that while you're, while you're playing. Take advantage of that mechanic. Uh, another thing, it kind of happened without me commenting on it, you'll notice that I captured one of the big mid-stage bosses. There's another one coming up here. And these are really important for scoring and for survival. So these mid-stage bosses uh, will show up and they've got these kind of glowing orbs on their head. You'll see this guy here. And you want to hit that orb as much as possible while, while avoiding doing excessive damage to the body. So then you can capture the orb and then it'll join you. And these are worth a lot of points. Um, and, and that's another cool thing about this game is that a lot of what you're doing for survival also applies for score. So it's not one of those games where you play it for survival and then you have to relearn it to play for score. A lot of what you're doing for survival applies to trying to get a good score, which is one of the things that I really like about it, one of the reasons I really love this game. Uh, I've got the screen clear item there, the gold one. Uh, it's an important one to use. Also gives you some bonus score. Uh, that guy there, notice I use the laser on him um, to pierce him. So that, that's another thing that I should mention about the weapon system in this game. The missile, which is the first weapon, is actually the highest DPS weapon in the game. Um, and the laser, which is the yellow lasers, those are the lowest DPS, but they can pierce through enemies. And then the wave can pierce through enemies and through kind of the geography, the, the rocks or different types of geometry that you'll be encountering. Um, and those slowly increase in DPS as you get up to the last wave level, which is I believe wave level three, and then it only has two upgrades. Um, I, every other level has two upgrades or three upgrades. Uh, and the last one has only two. And it adds uh, homing, uh, kind of homing, attacks with it. Another thing I did on that boss there, so that's King Fossil. Uh, that's kind of where I learned about point blanking in this game, so the closer you are to an enemy, the higher damage you're going to deal to it. It's somewhat dependent on weapon. Uh, and another important thing about the weapon system in this game is as you... Um, essentially, uh, there is missile, um, laser, wave level one, wave level two, wave level three, and each one of them has uh, multiple upgrades. So you know, I'll, I'll usually refer to that as okay. I've I've got missile dash one or missile dash two or missile dash three or wave level one dash one. Uh, right now, I'm at wave level two dash zero. Uh, and what's important to note about these upgrades is that when you die, you're going to go down one level. So you're not going to go down one, you know, unit, you're going to go down one level. So if you're at wave level 2-3 and you die, you're going to go down to wave level 1-0. And uh, that's not something to be too stressed about because of the way the weapon system works in this game. All the weapons are generally pretty good. Um, even if you get all the way down to missile, if you if you go that far down, like I mean, it's not that bad because you're dealing with the highest DPS weapon in the game. Oh, there's a uh, uh, one up there. So, uh, you know, another general piece of advice for when you're learning this game is is don't panic if you don't play it perfectly. You don't need to play it perfectly. This isn't, you know, Gradius or some of those other old school shmups where one mistake and you're kind of done. Uh, also, dying does not... Uh, it doesn't affect your shields or your bombs. only affects your, your weapon. So, your shield upgrades stay. Uh, I made a mistake on this boss. I brought the wrong weapon into it. I should have had one level lower, and then I would have been able to basically kill it almost you know, before it even finishes a cycle. Um, but that's fine. I, I mean, I wasn't even playing this for, for the intention of doing the run, so... Uh, it's another good example of how 
somewhat forgiving this game really is because of the shield system, because of the weapon system. Even though I was totally off my normal route, I was able to recover fine. Uh, and I only had to use one bomb. Now, uh, so that one up that I collected previously is somewhat important. There are only two one ups per run. There's one in stage three and one in stage six. It, it doesn't matter the route. And those are really important. Again, they not only give you two extra chances if you if you wipe out, they also give you a huge score bonus at the end of the game. So you want to keep as many of those lives as possible. So I'm at wave level 3 right now, and I guess this is a good time, a good time as any to talk about rank. So this game does have a ranking system, just like, you know, other classic shmups, where the better you play, the harder the game gets. And I think a lot of people are somewhat scared of rank and think that they, there's need to be, there needs to be some kind of, you know, hardcore rank management. Um, there is rank in this game, but I'm going to be totally honest. It, like, this is not Battle Grega. This is not any of those shmups where the rank is a huge difference, a huge detriment. Uh, oh, this is the... In my opinion, this is the hardest boss of the of the run. Uh, it's quite an irritating boss with some annoying bullet patterns. Uh, but totally manageable and... Also, bombing is not penalized in this game, so, you know, use your bombs. Uh, yeah, so anyways, rank. Basically, there's a couple of things that increase rank. Uh, collecting weapons. You can see I got pretty panicked there. I just, like, blew all my bombs on this one boss. Um, so I was pretty off-road. So, simply existing makes rank increase uh, to a limit per stage, but just existing increases rank. Um, every shot increases rank, uh, collecting any weapon upgrades increases rank, and, uh, destroying boss parts also increases rank. So it's important to note, though, that the thing that, you know, when rank increases, it, it, it increases, like, bullet speed and bullet size. Um, there's maybe, like, a couple of slight variations in bosses, depending on the rank. But it's really, uh, and and some enemies will like be a little more aggressive, but it's not super significant, and uh, it's really important to to recognize that the benefit of having powered up weapons far outweighs uh, keeping your rank down. And you, I'll see some people who try to you know go as long as possible with just missile, and you see how in this level one of the key elements here is to shoot. The grounded enemies they're the most power like they're, they're the most pain in the ass in this whole level and i couldn't do that if i didn't have a weapon that's powered up and can shoot through geometry so really i cannot stress enough just don't worry about rank for playing this game it never gets uh, unmanageably hard even at max rank and even my run i think that i i end this run at like um i got that written down here I end my run at 147 rank. Um, Boffner's speed run, which is going to be pretty low rank because it's a speed run, it ends at 84 rank. And Kota, who's the, the current uh, top of the leaderboard uh, from Japan, he ends with 255, which is max rank, right? So, uh, and and then if you watch the different playthroughs, uh, especially in the similar stages, th there's really not much of a difference. So, basically, that's a long-winded way of saying don't worry about rank. Um, power up your ship, learn the routing on high rank, and just uh, don't worry about it, really. And here is, uh, besides Golden Ogre, the first boss, uh, Double Dealer is the easiest boss. Uh, so it's the second easiest boss in the run. I'm um, taking advantage of point blanking here. And uh, this is an easy boss. 
simply because all you have to do is not let it get ahead of you. So I'm destroying those things that it spawns, those little uh, enemies that it spawns. And here I'm going to do the same. It's it's going to be spawning some enemies that will shoot some slow moving bullets at me. I just have to kill them quick so they don't shoot a lot of bullets so I can keep on them. And uh, the only attack that I don't like on this guy I'm not going to let him do because I'm going to kill him before he gets a chance to do it. I think you'll see him start it. Yeah, that's the only attack I don't like, and I just said, ah, you know what, you don't have to do that. So point blanking is uh, pretty important, and, you know, staying ahead of the enemies that bosses spawn. Simply to prevent them from doing phase changes and doing new behaviors that are kind of dangerous. Because again, we're playing for survival, we're not playing for score, we don't have to worry about that. That's one of the only differences, if you do want to play this game for score, um, boss milking becomes pretty important. This is a capture, an another capture that I mess up. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bit of a tricky capture, because uh, he's a pretty, pretty strong enemy. But all in all, this stage is actually not too bad, as long as you stay aggressive and stay forward as opposed to you know coming back and letting enemies come to you and if you take advantage of the geometry factor because this is an old school schmuck it has geometry you can run into stuff but you can also use it to block enemy projectiles and shoot through it so do take advantage of that uh, I missed the there is a one up there at the bottom of the screen under that turret so if you plan on doing this route it's a note but also when you're running your route or when you're deciding your route, do do what you think is fun, you know, and, and, and visually interesting. You will have to run it for a while if you want to do one credit clear, so you don't need to just pick a route that someone else has done because you saw them on YouTube. This is definitely one of those stages that's uh, quite different from playing your you know, a Don Maku or Bullet Hell style shmup. And you do want to use the cover there, you need to use the cover there because those uh, ground based enemies uh, are brutal. This boss is not too bad. So essentially, all I'm doing here is, you know, it's another classic, like when, when its mouth is open, you can damage it kind of thing. Um, because the rank is high, the bullets that it's spewing out are larger. Uh, but it makes a very clear audio cue when it's about to shoot the blue lasers like that. Um, those kind of blades that it's shooting from its back are very easy to uh, counter. You just have to shoot them and they'll bounce right back. There's nothing special about it. You'll notice when, when you shoot, uh, I think it's when you shoot at the crest, it'll sometimes fire back your projectiles at you. They'll be gray, but they don't actually deal any damage. It's just trying to fake you out a little bit. Uh, and I managed to kill that boss before it did the attack that is kind of its most dangerous. So, final stage. Um, these enemies are a real pain in the ass. You do want to shoot them and then move towards them, which is kind of counterintuitive. So they'll try to circle around you. So this capture, uh, you really do need to use your bombs to capture it and kind of get that uh, eyeball. I, I didn't manage to do it here on this run, um, but I mean that's fine. If you don't manage your capture, just take it out. The, the, the uh, mid bosses don't typically have a whole lot of health, so it's not uh, impossible to just take them out. Um, so, I mean, besides some, like, silly mistakes, I was doing pretty well up until this point. I, I do make some even worse mistakes here. But, like I said, this is a game where it's not incredibly difficult to recover. So, um, I am trying to keep a low profile um, and uh, be careful not to get pinched and stay down and, and shoot through the rock formations so that 
the enemies are shooting nothing instead of shooting me. But I have unfortunately taken too many hits. I don't have a shield right now. And I think I get pegged somewhere in here. And I didn't even bomb. Yeah, there it is. So I was cheesed because I was right at the very end, right? Right before I hit the final boss. Uh, and risk storage is not too bad of a boss. You, you know, you can't... Oh, that was a misfire. I accidentally pressed the bomb button and it did, like, no damage because he wasn't even ready yet. Um... Because this is a high rank, yeah, those balls are bigger, and I think you'll start, yeah, start shooting missiles. Uh, yeah, so that's that's something that happens when he's high rank. Like, it's, that's really it. That's not that bad. So don't worry about rank in this game. Um, that was an unnecessary bomb. I basically panic bomb and just blast a bunch of stuff away. Like, these are bad decisions. I don't need to bomb this, but I do. And I'm not dealing a whole lot of damage to him. So he has multiple body parts. I don't. I think I might end up, up taking out the tail, but I, I also might not. So these balls are irritating, and those bubbles that they make, unfortunately, those do hurt you and you'll see me die to one right there boom uh, I think it was an accident bomb as well but you know uh, stay in front of this attack do not go under it do not try to pass by it and there we go I didn't even realize I was gonna beat him and I did uh, with a life to spare two bombs to spare there's some of the bonuses that you get uh, and that's basically it. So, again, sloppy, a lot of mistakes. Uh, I've done better since, but even if you mess up, it's it's not something even a layman player can recover from. And if I can recover from it and get a one credit clear, I'm sure you can. So, in general, my advice is don't stress about rank. Uh... It's, it doesn't have is enough of an impact, especially when compared to the benefit of having uh, powered up weapons. And also weapons don't increase the rank that much compared to destroying boss parts. But in general, rank is not a huge factor if you're trying to play this game for survival. Uh, don't abandon your runs, same thing. Like getting hit and dying and having your weapons uh, go down is not the end of the world. And oh, another thing I forgot to mention, it's super important. When you, when your ship gets hit, and you die, it also cuts your rank by by more than fifty percent. So that's just a little bonus. Uh, th the game does want you to beat it in some ways. So again, don't stress out about it. And I wouldn't worry too much about optimally choosing weapons depending on the stage. Like when you get to perfecting your run and going for score, yes going to want to have certain weapons for certain bosses and whatnot but in general it's fine i wouldn't worry about it uh you you don't need to get a perfect run for this game it's it's not that old school it's not like darius one or, or darius two uh, another thing is just figure out your macro routing while you figure out your micro routing and don't worry about having to backtrack it's all good training uh utilize the environment well to block bullets and snipe enemies from cover and use the practice tools. This is not a shot triggers release, but it has some excellent practice tools. And you can even mess around with rank and which weapons you've got. Super helpful. And also use save stating, you know, to practice bosses. So that's about it. Hopefully this was helpful to someone. Uh, if you if there's something that you you know maybe wasn't clear if you have any questions feel free to sound off in the comments and good luck on completing a Darius guide in 1cc